Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott. What I want to do is go over the hydrolysis lab that uh, we did uh, in class, just in case you missed the data or you need a little refresher about how we got the information that we did. Um, so what the idea behind this lab is that when you dissolve ionic solids in water, those ions in the water can sort of play around with the water and sometimes make it acidic or basic. And what we want to do is come up with a way of understanding uh, why that happens and be able to predict whether that uh, ion will be um, will cause the solution to turn uh, the water acidic or basic. So what we first did is that we took uh, distilled water uh, as a point of reference and found the pH of it to be around 6. Um, and, uh, and then all the solutions that we made from it uh, were used, were made from that distilled water, so they were kind of affected by that. So our distilled water with a pH of 6 is kind of our baseline uh, for, uh, for this lab. So we're looking substantially above 6, then we're going to say it's basic. Substantially below 6, it's going to be acidic. Um, so um, what we should then do is to sort of figure out why this is happening, and maybe we come up with a pattern for it. Um, so first we're going to take a look at and just write down the ions that are present in each of the solutions. So in aluminum chloride, you've got your aluminum 3 plus and your Cl minus ions. Uh, sodium phosphate, you have your Na plus. You've got your PO4 3 minus ion. Uh, and these are all the ions that are present. Um, KCl, K plus, Cl minus, Li plus, Cl minus, uh, Na plus, and then HCO3 minus the hydrogen carbonate, the ammonium ion here, and the chloride ion, potassium ion, and the hydrogen sulfate ion, sodium ion, carbonate ion, and so on. We're going to do this for all of these. It's these ions that would be uh, playing around with water uh, in some way that could potentially cause to become acidic or basic. Na plus C2H3O2 minus Zn2 plus Cl minus and Na plus and Cl minus. So all of these are the ions that are going to be present um, in, in water. And what we can do to try to figure out why our solutions would be acidic or basic is that we can look at the acid and base that would have combined uh, to form this salt. So in other words, to form aluminum chloride as a salt, what would the acid and what would the base be that would form that? So the aluminum uh, ion would have to come from a base because it's positively charged. And so this would come from the aluminum hydroxide as a base. Um, the parent acid for the chloride ion would have to be HCl. So if you were to combine, if you were to combine these two acids and bases, they would make the aluminum chloride uh, salt. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. And what you do is that you look at the uh, parent acid and the parent base and decide is either of these strong. And so looking at um, these. Hydrochloric acid is the strong uh, parent acid. So we find whichever of the acid or the base is strong. In this case, it's the acid. So there we, we would assume that, uh, that our solution would be acidic, and that's what we notice, our pH of, of 1. So that's kind of our pattern that we want to look at, and this is a really simple way of uh, understanding hydrolysis and be able to predict whether our ionic uh, solution is going to be acidic or basic or even neutral. Looking at sodium phosphate, the next one down, uh, the sodium ion would have to come from sodium hydroxide as the parent base, and then H3PO4 would be uh, the parent acid. Now of those two, um, the sodium hydroxide is the strong of the version. Phosphoric acid is not strong. So the parent base that's strong is sodium hydroxide. Therefore, we would expect our solution to be basic, which we see it is, uh, with pH of 13. And that's kind of our pattern. 
uh, that we're going to follow. And it's going to give us a really simple way of deciding whether or not the, uh, the solution will be acidic or basic in water. So we kind of follow that in the, follow that process all the way down. Um, so uh, Na ions are always going to yield NaOH. Um, this is going to be Na, uh, HNO3. In terms of which of these are strong, well, nitric acid is strong, so does sodium hydroxide. So we would expect this one to be neutral. And that's kind of our, our, that's in our plan. If both parent acid and parent base are, are strong, they're always going to make uh, water plus a neutral salt. And that's what we would expect. And we're really close to, um, even though our distilled water is 6 and this is 7, it's pretty much uh, the same. Uh, kind of going further, HCl is going to be our acid from the chloride, KOH from the base. And again, both of these are strong. So we would expect this to be neutral, which it is neutral. Okay. Um, lithium hydroxide is going to be our base for our next one. Our parent acid is going to be HCl again. And both of these are considered strong. So we would expect this to be neutral. And we see that our pH is neutral. Okay. So that's kind of our pattern that we're going to follow. And it's really going to mirror what we're going to find. Our parent base for our next one is sodium hydroxide. Um, our parent acid, you know, H2CO3, even though it doesn't quite exist. But the strong one is sodium hydroxide. Therefore, we would expect this to be basic, which we see a pH 11 it is. And that's our process that we're going to follow for the rest of these. HCl, our parent acid, our parent base is going to be NH4OH. Our strong of these two. HCl, so we'd expect this to be acidic. It is at a pH of 4.5. Um, and the rest of these pretty much follow the same suit. Um, the only exception comes next. So looking at uh, potassium hydrogen sulfate, we'd have KOH as our strong base. And we would expect that this HSO4 ion would be coming from sulfuric acid. And so it's both of these being strong, we would expect this to be neutral. However, we see that it is definitely not neutral. It had a really, really low pH. Um, and the reason being, this hydrogen sulfate ion um, has another proton to donate. And if you look at the Ka value of this, um, it's a very large Ka, like 1 times 10 to the negative second. And for sort of a weak acid, uh, that's a very large Ka value. And so uh, this ion, uh, HSO4 minus ion, is really kind of an exception when you look at um, how these tend to uh, dissociate and how you sort of figure these out. So this ion is definitely one that you want to um, sort of keep in mind. It has a very, very low Ka. So with that in mind, we would expect it to be acidic. Um, and that's really sort of how this uh, process works. Um, and just to kind of fill out the other ones, um, we'd have NaOH as our, our base here, which is strong. And you're going to see the pattern really quickly. Our strong base, we would expect it to be basic, which it is. Um, HCl would be our acid. And then copper hydroxide would be our base. HCl is acidic. So we'd expect this to be, that's our HCLs are strong, so we'd expect it to be acidic. Um, the rest of these follow the same suit. So I'll just go ahead and write these in and highlight the, uh, which, of the which of the acid and base are, are strong. Sodium hydroxide is strong. We expect to be basic. pH 9 is basic. Um, we'd have HCl again, uh, actually for both of these. ZnOH2, uh, and then we would have, so of these two, we would expect it to be acidic, which a pH 1 it is. Um, and then lastly, we had uh, NaOH. So we've got both of these are strong, and so we would expect this to be neutral, uh, which it is. Sodium chloride is a neutral salt. So that's kind of how this uh, process works. Now, um, in terms of writing the hydrolysis equations, we can look at a couple examples of these um, and, uh, and understand sort of 
um, what's actually interacting here. Um, so if we have an acidic solution, kind of the way it uh, works is um, uh, we want to think about is if our solution is acidic, that means that we have water turning into um, the hydronium ion. So therefore, this ion has to donate an H+. Plus. So that's kind of what needs to happen. So of those ions, it would have to donate uh, a hydrogen ion. Uh, so that's kind of the idea. Um, so if we look at the example, for instance, of, let me switch colors here, uh, and I look at NH4. So if I look at uh, this particular uh, salt, well, which of these ions would have the hydrogen ion? Well, it's got to be our ammonium ion. So therefore, it would be the ammonium ion reacting with water uh, in equilibrium to form the hydronium ion. Uh, and then uh, what would be left over after the NH4 uh, leaves is going to be just ammonia, NH3. Because remember, you can kind of think about this as being NH3 with a hydrogen ion on it. Okay, That's another way of thinking about it. If we were to look at the exception that we had, which was the hydrogen sulfate ion, um, we saw that this was acidic. And so how would this work? Well, uh, it's going to donate this hydrogen ion to the water to make the hydronium ion. And uh, it's going to form uh, then the SO4 2 minus ion. So that's actually what's happening. And again, that happens because the hydrogen sulfate ion has a very large Ka. Some of the weird things that happen um, were with the metal ions. Uh, those are acidic. So how does that work? Well, let's say that we were dealing with the zinc ion. So the zinc ion is 2 plus charge. And this is the ion that would be interacting with water uh, to form the hydronium ion, H3O+. And it's sort of like, well, where's the hydrogen ion come from? Well, it turns out that the zinc actually complexes with water. And so I'm actually going to erase that plus for a moment. What happens is uh, the zinc still has a 2 plus charge, but it has waters that are surrounding it in a complex. And the way it works is that you might wonder, well, how, many, how, do, how do we know how many waters there are? Well, usually it's double the charge, so there would be four in this case. So what happens is that one of these waters here um, is actually going to break apart into H and OH here. Um, and so what's going to happen when one of those waters breaks apart, it'll donate a hydrogen ion to the water. So the zinc will then have one less water attached to it. Uh, so we'll have three now. The hydrogen ion from one water went to the water, and so we have the hydroxide left over. So then we have this weird uh, ion left over. Originally, it had a, a two plus charge, but then it had, uh, had the hydroxide on it. So two plus and a one minus makes a plus one overall. So a couple of weird circumstances, but that's generally how um, these uh, ions will form uh, something that's acidic in water. If something is going to be basic, that means that something needs to take away a hydrogen uh, from the water to form the hydroxide. So looking at the hydrogen carbonate ion, okay, um, this would react with water, and what's going to happen, the water is going to take away... Um, the water is going to take away this hydrogen ion. And so we definitely want to make it a hydroxide. And, uh, and so then that means that, uh, oh, pardon me, I said that backwards. The water is actually going to donate a proton over here. And so then it's going to make the H2CO3 um, carbonic acid. Now, the whole process and the way that we... Um, uh, 
I was Arbel. The whole process, the way this works is that um, whenever we're forming an acid and a base, it's got to be a weak uh, acid or base. And this is a weak acid, so that's, that, that's how we know that this is the ion that's interacting with water to make it basic. Last example, we have the PO43- ion reacting with water. This was another one that would be, that would be basic. And what's going to happen again, water is going to donate a hydrogen ion to the phosphate. So we'll have our HPO4 uh, with a 2 minus charge now. And that's how hydrolysis works. Again, we're forming a weak acid here. Um, and uh, this uh, PO4 ion is acting as a base. Um, and that's how hydrolysis works. And these are your net ionic equations. Thanks for watching.